A little while ago, I won an auction for a lot of pens. A, when I say a lot, meaning um, a group of seven pens. And amongst them was this particular one, a Lady Schaefer. The Lady Schaefer was a, a line of pens that was aimed at women uh, for the 1970s models, I think somewhere in around the 70s, mid-70s. And uh, my understanding is it wasn't a tremendously popular line of pens, uh, but they were fairly interesting, I thought. I mean, Schaefer, I, I, I've shared a lot about Schaefer pens, modern ones, vintage ones, and this was a line of pens that are going to look fairly familiar to most people who are into uh, some of the Schaefer pens from the 70s up through the 90s. It's going to look very familiar to you. Uh, and it's got a design on it that was also going to look fairly familiar to you. But it came uh, in the, the original box, but you know, it, it didn't have any of the, the packaging or the padding. So um, it just kind of rolls around in this particular box. So I'll open it up. And it did have this pen. And it had this booklet. So, for a lifetime of writing pleasure, the use and care guide. Schaefer Lifetime. So, the Schaefer Lifetime Guarantee, the user and the care guide. So, filling instructions for various types of uh, filling, uh, filling pens and various uh, methods like cartridges and roller balls and uh, mechanical pencils. They're all listed here. How to cartridge fill, um, how to bottle fill. So, I figured, you know, why not? Let's... Uh, Let's go ahead and ink the baby up. So this was a Lady Schaefer, and the pattern on it, you know, various patterns of Lady Schaefer's had different model numbers. This particular one was the Schaefer 642, the Lady Schaefer 642. And you'll see some similarities uh, with some more modern pens. It's slightly smaller, a little bit more dainty, um, so it would fit well in, let's say, a lady's purse, uh, but still to look, you know, fairly elegant. So it's got that silver with a little bit of goldish trim there in that scalloped pattern. And looking at it, I actually ran across a video not too long ago um, on how they made some of these scalloped patterns. So I'm going to try to share it here so you can see perhaps, and I don't know for certain that this is the way it was done, Perhaps this is uh, how those uh, patterns are made into these pens. I may be completely wrong, but I just found that video very interesting. So, looking here, you've got that, that gold tone clip with the Schaefer white dot. You've got almost a domed finial, but this one has like kind of a dent in it right there. So, obviously, there is a, a bit of a blemish there. And you come down to the bottom and you've got basically that scallop pattern that has almost like a a gold tone painting on there and you look at it uh, you do have made in USA Schaefer right there on that cap band it is a slip cap you pull it apart and here you have a semi hooded 14 karat gold nib That style was fairly popular back in the 70s. So here you've got a nice plastic tapered down section. And it is a cartridge converter pen. This one actually came with a converter that was a squeeze converter. So it actually had a good sack in it that was pliable and able to suck up some ink. So I decided to go ahead and keep that in there. You know, and, and it is the, the shape of a Schaefer cartridge at the bottom. It is a proprietary uh, cartridge or converter system for Schaefer. And put that back on, and you can see I ate myself just from holding it like that. So let's go ahead and put the cap back on. Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll show you right here in just a moment how the 642 to write and maybe share with you a few more details.
Cipher Targa Dot com actually has a lot of the Lady Schaefers and one of the cool things is I can show you pictures of what the Lady Schaefer looked like in when it was brand new. So I'm going to go ahead and narrate some of these pictures. So um, when you look at it, that scallop pattern uh, that I shared with you here, and this is what it looked like when it was fresh. I mean a, a nice clean brand new pen. All right, and also, and this this is what it would look like capped when it was brand new, fresh out of the factory, or at least preserved very, very well. Unlike this one, this one's a little dirty, a little bit beat up, uh, but it's actually a very nice looking pen, and very elegant in its day. Taking a look over here, you can see the made in USA right on the pen, Schaefer, just like I had told you about it earlier. And the nib, I told you about it as well, the 14 karat gold nib, and this is kind of what it looks like when it is um, a little close-up view when it's nicer and cleaner. SchaeferTarga.com is the website where I found this, and you can check out uh, a lot of different models there, including the Lady Schaefer, and that's how you can identify a model of Lady Schaefer if it's one that uh, you think that you've got. Now that I've shared with you um, a little bit about that particular pen that way, Let's go ahead and pull it apart. And yes, you can post this one nice and secure. And yes, it is good enough to hold where it's not tremendously backweighted, believe it or not, with the length of that particular pen. When you go ahead and you cap it or at post it, it's really not that far off being backweighted at all. So I've got no problem using it like this. And this is usually how I use it because uh, it's uh, just about the right length. So let's go ahead and uh, share with you a little bit about the Lady Schaefer. The 642. And this is from the 1970s. And it has a 14 karat gold nib. This one happens to have a medium nib on it. And you can actually get some a little tiny bit of flex, even though it's kind of a semi-hooded nib uh, because of the material that it is and the time period in which it was manufactured. This one, you know, even though this one is not the cleanest, and you know, I mean, I cleaned it up and used a jeweler's cloth on it, and it, uh, I shined it up compared to what it was. It was really grungy when it came to me. Still not perfect, but it's actually... I've been really, really happy with this pen, the way it uh, started to write, because uh, we flushed it out really well, and I was really happy that that squeeze converter was still in great condition, still very pliable, was able to suck up ink, and I have been very, very happy with this particular pen. As a matter of fact, some of my pen pals, I'm sure, have been getting letters with this particular pen. So if you're looking for something that's somewhat vintage, these are still findable. I mean, you can still get these on, on eBay. Um, I, I did check and see that, yeah, there are actually sellers out there who still have them. Um, it's not a bad pen. It's, even for a guy, even though it's a lady shaper. It's still a decent pen to have in your collection, and uh, I've been using this for a carry pen. I've been using this here on my desk. I've been using it for note-taking, letter-writing, um, checkbook register, you name it. I've been using it an awful lot. This particular ink, by the way, I forgot to tell you about that particular ink. A buddy of mine uh, gave me this particular bottle of Diamine Skull and Roses, and it's actually a, a dark blue ink here. Um, and I know it shows up really dark here, it kind of almost looks black, but it is actually a very dark blue ink, Diamine Skull in Roses. So, I've been happy with this particular pen. I like how it cleaned up um, compared to what it was. It's still got you know, some pitting, and uh, so it's not, definitely not perfect. But, you know, a pen from the 70s that who knows how it's been treated. Uh, and some of the pens that came in the lot that I got were really some garbagey, vintage stuff that's corroded uh, some of it I don't know if it's uh, salvageable or not really disappointed with some of the other pens that came in but this is actually one of the better pens 
that came in that lot. So it was it was one of those things. I was bought at auction, um, and I just had to go with it and hope that some of them were halfway decent. And this is probably the best out of the lot that I had gotten. So, you know, not not a, not a tremendously high end pen, but not a low end pen either. But a nice little Lady Schaefer 642, and it's it's worth considering.